So geste antagoniste um, is a French term that translates to antagonistic gesture. Um, other terms that uh, are used for the same phenomenon are sensory trick, alleviating maneuver, and counter pressure sign. Um, and this is something that happens in patients who have uh, focal dystonia, not just focal dystonia, it can happen in generalized dystonia as well, but it's much more common in focal dystonia. The most common form of focal dystonia that we see is cervical dystonia. Uh, and in cervical dystonia, there are three different uh, varieties. One is what is called torticollis, which is a turning or twisting motion of the head like this. Then there's anterocollis, where the patient's head is flexed like so. And there's retrocollis, where the patient's head is thrown backwards. Um, so patients who have uh, cervical dystonia, um, as well as other kinds of focal dystonia, have found, many of them have found, that they can alleviate this abnormal head position just by touching somewhere around their head or face. Something as light as just a little fingertip pressure on one side of the face, for instance, may allow somebody to straighten uh, their head. It's not a mechanical thing. The patients, who, the patients who do this are not forcing their head over. It's just the slight sensory stimulation uh, on the face that somehow alleviates this abnormal motor activity that produces the dystonic posture. Uh, <clears throat> so the type of sensory trick or geste antagoniste that a patient displays may depend upon the subtype of uh, cervical dystonia, whether they're retrocollis, anterocollis, or retrocollis. And I'm gonna show you some examples of that in a second. Um, so the geste antagoniste was described first in the 16th century. Uh, and then there's, there was a very uh, influential paper that was written out of France around the turn of the century. Uh, and the authors of that paper um, made the case that this ability to alleviate abnormal head position with something as simple as touching the face couldn't possibly be organic. Uh, it had to mean that the cervical dystonia itself was psychogenic. Psychogenic, psychosomatic, not organic. Uh, so that paper was written by two very influential uh, French neurologists and it set the tone for the next 50 years. Uh, uh, medicine, um, in general, came of the opinion that uh, cervical dystonias were psychosomatic or psychogenic uh, conditions. And so it, it set progress back decades and decades and decades. It wasn't until the 50s and 60s uh, that physicians began to question this dogma about uh, cervical dystonia being psychogenic. And a lot of that thought has, has, to, uh, has to do with this just antagonist. And it's gotten, it, we've reached a point now, you know, over 100 years later, where th the situation has gotten reversed, where a patient who actually, who has a just antagonist, that's taken as a sign that this is indeed an organic condition. Uh, it's being used in some of the newer definitions of cervical dystonia. Um, this, this, that this is that the gest antagonist um, is a, is a sign that this is not psychosomatic. So we've gone 180 degrees from where we were around the turn of the 20th century. So this is a lady that I was treating with Botox for her cervical dystonia, and she's found that she can put her hand uh, behind her head and straighten her neck. If she, if she were to remove her hand from behind her head, her head turn and tilt would get much, much worse. So that's one example of a uh, geste antagonist. Um, so in 2015, a paper was written about the history of the geste antagonist, and they went back and got some of the original photographs uh, of, for instance, the paper that was published around the the turn of the century that said that just antagonist was a sign of non-organicity. Uh, so I'll put the reference to that paper in the comments uh, to this video.
Um, but they collected all these photographs, uh, all these vintage photographs of examples of patients who have uh, just antagonists. And in this one, you can see in the far left uh, panel, uh, the patient's head is turned. They have almost a pure torticollis. Uh, so that's their head position at rest. Uh, but he can put his finger to his face, uh, different parts of his face, and his head will straighten out. And as long as he walks around, he's got, he's got to walk around all day with his hand, you know, touching his face. Uh, but at least he keeps his head straight. So here are a couple of other examples. Uh, the, the upper one is a lady who has a head turn and a head tilt, which is common in torticollis. Uh, but she's found that if she touches her face, she can straighten her head out. Uh, the bottom one is another guy with a complex head position. But if he touches his face, he can straighten his head out. Um, <clears throat> so as I said, uh, the, the kind of uh, just antagonist that you might see in a patient may depend upon the type of cervical dystonia, whether it's a retrocollis, anterocollis, or retrocollis. And one of my favorite examples is this one, which is from Bing and Haymakers, Local Diagnosis of Neurological Disease. And this is a patient who had retrocollis, and he found that if he stuck a wooden, wooden spoon, if he stuck a wooden spoon into his suspenders and just let it rest against the back of his head, it would relieve his retrocollis. So that's an interesting example of another sensory trick in cervical dystonia. So you can have sensory tricks in other kinds of dystonia as well. Cervical dystonia is the most common. Uh, but for instance, someone who has oromandibular dystonia, who has constant uh, motions of their jaw, clenching their jaw, chewing, and that kind of, th making those kind of motions, uh, sometimes if they'll like put a toothpick in their mouth, it may stop those abnormal motions. Or they may have to put something between their teeth, and if they just lightly hold it between their teeth, that'll stop the abnormal movements. So there's, there's a lot of... Uh, different varieties of just antagonists that you may see in different types of focal dystonias. But the most common by far um, is cervical dystonia with things like touching the face and touching the head to straighten it out.